Welcome everyone, thanks for tuning in to 2K Sports. We've got some NBA action for you coming up. Kevin Harlan here with Greg Anthony and a pair of Hall of Famers with us, Doris Burke and David Aldridge. GA, it's all yours. Head coach Quinn Snyder is trying to help the Jazz break through in a crowded Western Conference. Snyder said, there's always challenges and I'm comfortable with adversity. I just want to keep the right perspective. I've got something that I love to do. Kevin, he is one of the biggest reasons the Jazz is always a factor. He is doing a great job. Thank you, D.A. It's getting late in the season. Let's now see the standings out east. We take a look at the Hawks. What a run they've had this year in first place and charging seemingly at will toward the postseason. These guys have been outstanding. And right now for the Hawks, they've had a dream season. And I think they're only going to get stronger as we approach the postseason. You know, and that's something we see a lot from teams that come out of the blue like they have this season. Their confidence just grows and grows with each passing week, and they hit the playoffs riding high. A look at Atlanta's opening lineup. Over on the wings, it's Bazemore and Prince. And it's Young, and it's Vucevic, and it's Spellman in at the power forward position. And for the Jams, Mitchell is the two with Ingles at the three. Crowder is the four, and Gobert is the five. And it's Exum in at the one spot. Now, here's Exum. Here's Mitchell. And that comes off the assist by Exum. A lot of opinions, Doris, on who may be named the coach of the year. When you look at the criteria for you in your voting, what do you look at? Well, obviously, you think about who has the best record. That's the first thing you look at. And what has contributed to that best record? But it isn't only about that, right? You have to consider, number one, what's the roster challenges that head coach may have had to overcome? Did he have to deal with any midseason trades? There are so many things that go into making up a great year as a basketball coach in the NBA. So many things. And so Bazemore will bring it up for the Atlanta Hawks. And slam dunk by Vucevic. Vucevic knows who he is. This guy is a close scorer, a legit threat to finish it with authority. Passes it to Gobert. Back to Mitchell. That's tipped. And Vucevic kicks to Young. Back to Vucevic. Prince against Engel. Vucevic trying to get open. Prince misses. Three on three. On the wing, Mitchell. Another miss by Utah. Boy, just one for four. A little brisky right now. And here's Young from the arc. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. And the effortless shooting motion. Young's three-point jumper is just poetry in motion and has it on automatic. Now here's Crowder. He's averaging around five and a half points a game. Ingles passes to Mitchell. To the right side. Lock at six. A tray. Another miss by Utah. The Hawks have gone two for four from the field so far today. Mitchell against Bazemore. Crowder pulls it in. Very dangerous to leave a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. Exum finds Gobert. Pass to Mitchell. Shoots over Bazemore. The Jazz again can't hit it. Boy, a really tough quarter for this guy. Just struggling to make shots right now. And a four-year player at Baylor, Torian Prince, something of a surprise time lottery pick back in 2016. But Greg, he's become a very valuable player. 
you know, he, he's one of those two-way power wings that, that, that it seems every team wants. A dependable three-point marksman who holds his own defensively. And a first time out of the game called for Utah. And the playmaking of Joe Ingles, such a valuable asset for the Jazz. Well, Greg, they've needed more shot creation. And his growth in that regard, especially operating in the pick and roll, such a big lift to their offense. Taking a look here at some numbers for Trey Young. Breaking down his play since the All-Star break. He's right around 13 points a night, three assists, and two rebounds. You know, you look at the numbers and you think that this is great, but we know that he's capable of even bigger production. You know, the numbers look okay, but the eye test tells us unequivocally he is capable of more. That is the sign of a star right there. Boy, the wheels have definitely fallen off in this quarter. He cannot buy one. The shot comes out. The Jazz go the other way with it. And this game, the first chance they've had to see Atlanta. And it was a matchup you thought they would have cruised through. But they actually dropped the game in this series last year. Now here's Crowder. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Young with the steal. Prince with it. Now defended by Exum. And terrific work on the offensive glass. And he picks up two. Nikola Vucevic has averaged double-digit rebounds for the vast majority of his career. You want him to get to work on the offensive end? No problem. Here's Crowder. Back to Exum. Kicks to Crowder. Mitchell outside. Gobert trying to get open. That's good for Mitchell on the assist from Crowder. Mitchell's got five now. How about a nice bounce to his step from Donovan Mitchell getting the catch-and-shoot game, sir? And Atlanta calls their first time out of the game. Fresh from a win against the Nuggets. Yeah, facing that hostile crowd. Uh, they just found a way to kind of tune out the noise and focus on the game. Well, the best way to silence a crowd is with your offensive game. Those fans got quiet in a hurry when the bucket started raining down. we go to the 2k leaderboard over the past month these teams have been playing a very entertaining brand of basketball the fourth spot held by the jazz now they've been playing an exciting brand of basketball during that time i mean taking every chance to get out in the open floor there's 138 left in the first lenka kicks to payton anderson passes to vonley takes a three utah with the rebound yeah, they got that one, but early on, it's it's really been a struggle for them to secure that defensive backboard. Here's Anthony. Len grabs the board. The Hawks leading by four. Here's Peyton. The shot's good. Well, the Jazz's Quinn Schneider has become one of the most respected head coaches in the league. And think, guys, a player poll even had him ranked seventh among coaches they'd like to play for. And consider he's in Utah. That is not exactly a free agent destination. 
love seeing a point guard who can explode to the rim like that. Oh, great attitude and even a better finish. Boy, it's incredible how much explosive scoring ability can come from the lead guard position. That is a big-time play. And the shot goes in. To me, if I'm Alfred Payton, I want to capitalize from right here. Do your work in the mid-range. Here is Gorton. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Parker kicks to Gortat. Five on the clock. Outside Anthony. From downtown. The putback. It's good on the putback. Well, long arms and great instincts make Jabari Parker a terrific offensive rebounder. And here is Peyton. There's the triple. And the last second attempt does not go in for him. And that concludes the first quarter of play. Hawks on top, up by four. And we'll get the second quarter underway on the other side of this break. Rudy Gobert talks about his expectations for the team. Every year I want to keep getting better. And, you know, people didn't really believe in our team a few years ago. They were kind of, you know, laughing at us. When I say I want to win a championship, people are laughing. But I believe that we're going to win a championship. Well, and as a competitor, this is what you should be thinking, and Greg, you should be talking about winning a title. For sure. I mean, it'll take a lot of work, but Gobert sounds like he's up for the challenge of proving the doubters wrong. And for those of you just tuning in, the second quarter of action is where we're at right now. And for the Hawks, guys, what stands out to you stats-wise? What we saw in that first quarter, uh, they won their matchups defensively. I think across the board, a number of guys have done a great job guarding multiple positions. Anthony out there with Jabari Parker. Then it's Rodney Hood. Then it's Gortat. And it's Jerome in a point. That's the group for Utah getting going here in the second. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Oldham. Well, Kevin, coming into the 2017 draft, Donovan Mitchell wasn't sure he was ready for the NBA. Mitchell said, I worked out in the summer with Paul George and Chris Paul. They were the ones who convinced me to keep my name in the draft. They said, look, you're good enough. Just go out there and show it. Kevin, through a couple of seasons in Utah, that's exactly what Mitchell has done. He has made an instant impact on the NBA and the Jazz, DA. Thank you. Happy to oblige. Here's Herder. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. And there's the call on Marcin Gortat. That's his first foul. Boys, what's the best combination of inside outside basketball you see offensively now? Well, two guys really come to mind immediately for me. It's Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis because both men can face up and knock down shots in a legitimate enough fashion that you've got to get out and contest those guys. But the other side of this is they can play in the post and be a legitimate back-to-the-basket force who you've got to guard with more than one guy. I mean, how exciting, Kevin, are Joel and AD to watch play? They are thrilling. I would agree. Here's Jerome. Can't tie it up as that one misses. To the wing right side. One kick kicks to Vonley. Pass to Herter. Nailed from three-point land. Herter's got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. And the Jazz call time here. Coming off that loss against Philadelphia. How about the shooting percentage, though, in the low 30s? That, that tells you all you need to know. I think indicative of some breakdowns in their offensive execution. Uh, you don't create any open looks, and they couldn't make the ones they were taking.
substitutions. Let's quickly bring up the 2K leaderboard for a look at the top free throw shooters among point guards. The fourth spot held by Trey Young. They are as reliable at the free throw line as you're going to find in this league. And that's something we've come to expect from the point guard position. You know, but even so, don't take for granted what this group has done at the free throw line. They deserve a ton of credit for the work they put in to achieve that level of consistency and excellence. And not a night he's going to want to remember, just not really able to score the basketball. The three. He's off on that one. And it's Utah the other way. Now, here's Exum. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Here's Gobert. A shot off that time. Great D that time from Vucevic. And here's Young. He'll bring it up for the Atlanta Hawks. Only given up two points this quarter. Good. Vucevic has got the lead up to seven now for the Hawks. Well, what anticipation from the Montenegrin center. Vucevic reading the defense well on the catch and shoot. And the whistle blows in the backcourt violation. He went over and back. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for the Utah Jazz. On Wednesday, they'll be facing Stephen Adams and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then on Friday, they'll continue the road trip heading out to Atlanta to take on the Hawks. And, you know, nobody loves playing on the road, but it does offer a good chance to see exactly what your team is made of. This team is going to find out a lot about itself over the next stretch of game. Now here's Prince. Seven-point game, the biggest lead in the game. Gobert with the block. And the remarkable reach of the stifled tower. Gobert twice on the pipes. The Hawks leading by seven. Well, they call Rudy Gobert the stifled tower. Probably the game's most dominant rim protector. And in today's game, that's not enough. You also have to come out of the paint and defend smaller players in switches. He, he straddles those two needs better than anyone in the league. Well, they say the post-up big man is dead and gone in the NBA. But don't tell that to Nikola Vucevic, an offensive focal point, and he does some of his best work on that low block. And he makes the first. And you look at the footwork of Vucevic inside. His moves uh, and counter moves. Terrific. Shades of Kevin McHale. And that's something he's continued to develop in the pros. A response to defenders who often surpass him athletically. Parker's checked in for Joe Ingles. And both free throws good for Vucevic. Well, Nikola Vucevic is a capable back-to-the-basket scorer, and he plays with tremendous confidence, guys. Mitchell dishes to Parker. He kicks it to Gobert. The pass to Exum. Trying to get something going, and he sinks the layup. Exum's got his first two points of the night. Dante Exum, outstanding, absorbing the contact, just bullies his way with the defense. Prince with it, now defended by Exum. Utah with the rebound. And he did everything he could to make that shot as difficult as possible. We call that a great contest. You know this is something he brings to the table, the ability to anchor your defense. Here's Bazemore, following the basket by Donovan Mitchell. Passes it to Vucevic. The kick out to Young. Oh, good on the triple. And just not able to find the target from three-point range here in the second quarter, although he did knock down one in the first. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And out of Marquette, Jay Crowder, Frank, a sturdy two-way wing player. A great system player and glue guy. He had his best years with the Celtics on the final year of this contract a great value considering what he brings to the table shooting two
The first free throw is good. And Jay Crowder ends every post with the hashtag, it all started in the driveway. And Doris, he knows just how far he's come. No doubt. Jay Crowder said back then he was always the youngest guy on the court with no fouls called. That is how you develop into a competitor. And both free throws good from Crowder. I just have so much respect for how Jay Crowder plays the game. This guy works so hard for every single minute he's out there, and you love seeing that. Now, here is Young. He's got five. Vucevic. That's in coming off the assist from Young. Ten points for Vucevic. Yeah, and there it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great inside position. And stolen by Bazemore. And now Young running the floor all by himself. And it's good. Two points. And it's a seven-point Hawks lead. You know, you can't afford to let Young slip by you, especially in these open floor situations. That is inviting trouble. Exum finds Mitchell. The kick out to Crowder. Jacks up a three. Drills the three-pointer. Crowder's got five points now this quarter. You simply can't give this guy open looks. Jake Crowder is one of the best three and deep players in the league. Coming off a big game, his confidence couldn't be higher, and Coach knows it. Well, the best players, to me, deliver night after night after night. So as long as he's hot, keep riding it. And so we wrap up the first half. Hawks lead by six. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. With Coach Quinn Snyder, Quinn, what has to happen in the second half? Well, we got to keep getting stops and really just make plays. Make plays on the offensive end and, and be solid defensively. No, no magic. It's a pretty simple game, right, Coach? Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Welcome back to 2K Sports, everybody. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Let's talk about that first half. Nikola Vucevic on fire in the first half. He had 12 points and three rebounds. An extremely potent first two quarters for him. Kenny, what was your take on Atlanta? Well, first and foremost, you got to take care of the basketball. And that means playing with toys, making good decisions, and not giving away any possessions. They did a great job of that in the first half. And Shaq, how do you think the Jazz were playing? I like the way they rebounded. They devoted a lot of energy down low, fighting for each other on the boards, and they helped keep this game tight. If they can continue to do that, it could easily be the factor that swings the game in their favor. And that does it for our halftime show. We now take you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the third period. Second half of basketball upon us. We may be in for an exciting finish based on how close of a game it's been so far. You know, Vucevic, guys, has been exceptional. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. Boy, he has been shouldering the load. Aggressive, skilled, talented, and thus far, unstoppable. We've got second half action for you, and if the next couple quarters are similar to the first, this one could go down to the last possession. Third quarter action getting rolling right now. Brought to you by Gatorade. All filled up and ready to go. Here's who's on the floor. On the court right now for the Hawks. Young and Bazemore team up in the backcourt. And it's Vucevic. Then it's uh, Torian Prince. And it's Spellman in at the four slot. Here's Exum following the basket by Trey Young. Crowder feeling it out a bit. Six on the shot clock. Back to Exum. Here's the three. They get it again. And slam dunk by Gobert. You know that old expression, you can't teach size. But Gobert showing great effort as well. I love that he creates second chance opportunities. Vucevic trying to get open. Shots good from Young. 
lot of switching on every possession in the NBA from a defensive standpoint. And you see the way Doris offenses are adjusting to that. Yeah, I think, number one, you have to attack the switch. That's first and foremost. And it's an interesting balance between attacking and being patient. Because the one thing you're ultimately seeking in every switch is a favorable matchup for yourself. That's where a critical thinking guard who knows where to find and put the ball is so critical to your success. That's a good way to look at it. Here's Exum after Torian Prince's bucket. Exum passes to Crowder. And Gobert kicks to Ingles. Pass to Crowder. Another shot. It's good. Crowder's got seven points. I'll tell you, Joe Ingles is proving that as a passer, he is a special player. Pass to Vucevic. Beyond the arc. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. 15 points in the game. Great play calling, great execution. Leads to four for four to start this half. And the Jazz call time here. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Unlay's checked in. Now we have a moment to look at how the blocks have been stacking up over the past several months for Gobert. We're just not seeing that same fierceness out of him defensively these last few months. He's lost a little bit of that intimidation factor. He's not blocking as many shots, and he's not making the same impact on that end of the floor. Jazz trail by 11. Here's Jerome. There's the pass to Hood. Now Gortat. Feeds to Anthony. Shot clock at five. Ice ball movement by Utah. From outside the arc. Another miss by Utah. The Hawks leading by 11. Well, Noah Vonley was given a lot of minutes to work with last season, and he showed solid improvement. Well, Vonley was productive, both as a scorer and a rebounder. He made great use of the opportunity presented to him. You think about it. He came into the league at such a young age, you forget he's still years away from what we should consider his prime. For Atlanta, they've gotten every shot to drop since halftime. They're five for five from the floor. Young drives in, score the basket. It's number six for him this game. Six for nine, 67% shooting. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. Now here's Anthony. Will it go? Carries it from three-point range. Anthony's got his second bucket tonight. You know, you can tell the three-point shot is something that Mello has developed over his course of time in the league. Time call here. The Hawks decide to talk it over. Jabari Parker's checked in for the Jazz. And the Hawks will go for a different look here. Alex Lenz checked in for Vucevic. Anderson comes in for Torian Prince. Kevin Herter, he's checked in for Kent Bazemore. And it's Alfred Payton in for Young. And what a half for this offense. If they can stay this hot, a great chance to extend this lead. Pass to Anthony. Fires for three. He can't hit that time. The Hawks leading by 15. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. I tell you, you can see how hard 
hard it is to avoid fouling Justin Anderson. The elite athleticism combined with a really good feel for this game. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. And of course, we'd all like to see his percentage at the line improve, but he just does not have Take the touch right now. He's in the 60s. Two shots. That free throw good from Anderson. Doris, you've accomplished so much in your award-winning career. What was your first experience in broadcasting? Kevin, my first experience was I left coaching, and they put Providence College women's basketball on radio. That was the first ever game I got to call. It was so cool. Uh, tell me yours. What was the very first? Did you study this? How did you get into broadcasting? I did. Our high school had a radio station, and the first basketball broadcast was underneath the bleachers, looking through popcorn boxes and legs of the people that were standing in the bleachers so that I could see the court from the baseline. Amazing. Because that's where the that's where the telephone cables were to plug in our equipment. Wow. I was uh, 16 years old. Incredible. I remember very well. Incredible. Very well. <laughs> the Hawks leading by 15. Pass to Peyton. 127 left in the third. Anderson against Parker. Anderson kicks to left. There's Von Lane. And once again off the mark by Atlanta. Utah has gone one of four and three point shots here in the third. Hood, the pass to Jerome. That's going to be over and back. Not watching for the line that time. As we approach the playoffs, let's now take a look at what is shaping up in the West. Take a look at the Jazz. They've had a great season and will look to extend that into the playoffs. Right now for the Jazz, they've stayed right there, just in sniffing distance of the conference leaders. That's a solid accomplishment at this stage of the season. Yeah, even so, though, I'm sure they're not satisfied just being near the top of the standings. They're going to be looking to make a major push as the season winds down. Jazz trail by 15. From 10 feet out, he squares up and sinks it. Jerome's got his second basket of the night. Way to create just enough separation to get that shot to go. Well, to me, that's about skill overcoming size. And how about the fearlessness at the offensive end? Here's Anthony. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. You know, great scorers just have that knack. Get inside, it's either a bucket or a trip to the free throw line. The Jazz have had two chances at the line already, making them both. And in terms of team numbers, uh, the free throw percentage is right at 74. First one falls for him. Yeah, that's an interesting point about Carmelo, one of the most prolific free throw shooters in the history of the game. Spends a lot of time at the stripe. That misses, so he splits the free throws. The Hawks leading by 12. Here's Herter. Six points for him. Peyton with the ball. Over Exum. And the last shot before the buzzer is off. And so it's Atlanta enjoying a 12-point lead as they talk things over during the break. And it's been their rugged defense setting the tone. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. While we have the chance now, folks, let's go to our State Farm assist of the game. 
It's just true artistry right there. I mean, great decision on where to go with the ball, and how about the perfect delivery? We call that Greg putting it right in the pocket, and he knew what to do with it once it was there. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today as we get going in quarter number four. Mitchell is the two with Ingles at the three. Jay Crowder out there with Parker, and it's Exum in at the guard position. That's the group right now for Utah. The Hawks leading by 10. Peyton right side, and Peyton throws it down. What a bonus to have a point guard who can throw it down like that. Go ahead, Alfred Peyton. Mitchell passes to Crowder. Parker outside. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Alex Len picks one up. You know, obviously, it's been a tough go for Jabari Parker out of the gates in his career. He had to handle a couple of injuries early, but this is a former number two overall pick. And what we know unequivocally is this guy can put the ball in the basket. Can he find the right situation where he can flourish? He misses the free throw. And for Parker, who has had to fight back from injuries, sometimes the motivation seems to be lacking. Well, Jabari Parker doesn't turn heads on the defensive end, and so that's part of what gets him off the floor at times. He needs to make sure that not only is he interested in scoring, but he's got to be willing to make stops as well. And the second free throw, good. Let's remember, Jabari Parker was the number two overall pick in 2014. It's just been problematic for him that he's had to fight his way through multiple injuries. Back to Vucevic, and Vucevic throws it down. And this is what we've come to expect from this guy, right? Not only making a ton of shots, but being efficient while doing so. Gobert dishes to Parker. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Parker's got five points now in the quarter. That is the ability to create space off the dribble. Jabari Parker's got skills. Peyton passes to Prince. Final quarter of play, about a minute and a half off the clock into it. Pass to Spellman. Shot clock at six. Here's Peyton. And they force the shot clock violation. Great team. Kent Bazemore is checked in for a minute. Trey Young comes in for Alfred Payton. And it's Parker with the ball, bringing it up for Utah. 11-point game. Mitchell kicks to Exum. And the pass to Gobert. Mitchell outside. Four on the shot clock. Off target from outside. I'll tell you, this has not been his game, and he's making it worse with shot selection like that. Mitchell against Prince. The dish to Vucevic. Here's Spellman. A three-pointer is right on target. Spellman's got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. This is it to go bare. A stupendous finish in traffic. I'll tell you, little you can do to stop Gobert in there. He's just too long and too hungry. Young outside. Rebound by Parker. Parker's got four rebounds in this game. To the paint. And the dunk by Parker. And, and didn't do anything fancy there, but didn't need to. Nope, he, his only concern right now is getting the points on the board. I, I don't mean style points. Now here's Prince. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points, so one free throw coming up. 
And with their hot shooting here in the second half, their field goal percentage over 50% now for the game. Find the lane. Find the lane. One shot. That one misses for Prince. Well, Doris, you look at Joe Ingles, he's quietly become one of the better small forwards in the NBA. And he is the prototypical don't judge a book by its cover because they call him slow mo Joe or average Joe. But dig a little bit deeper. This guy is a quality playmaker and a knockdown shooter. Atlanta calls timeout. now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Nikola Vucevic. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's been in constant motion, creating a lot of good looks for himself. But, but still, even when you're wide open, you expect to miss some of the time. That has not been the case here tonight. This guy has made everything. I don't think anyone in this building saw this coming. I'm sure that of the players who these fans thought would beat them, his name was not at the top of the list. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sidelines. I was able to listen in on Lloyd Pierce talking with his team. He wants them to maintain their balanced attack, but he told them they're doing a great job of finding space out on the perimeter, which has led to all those good shots. He likes the rhythm and the flow of this offense. He just told them, keep shooting it with confidence. Kevin? Thank you, David. And it's out of bounds. Utah able to retain possession here. Active hands from him as he's able to deflect that pass out of bounds. Well, that's what you call a game of inches. They talk about it in football. We see it right there. Parker. Rebound by the Hawks. Vucevic has got rebound number five here tonight. The feed now to Young. Lee Baz was put in just the right spot. You gotta like seeing this from Young. Well, wanting to prove he's more than just a jump shooter. Mitchell against baseball. Looking to get back on track here. And it's Mitchell missing. Boy, if you're going up against this guy in this close a range, you've got to defend with everything you've got. A tremendous job defensively. And Vucevic throws it down. Well, the post game, the jump shot. Vucevic, a capable scorer who loves taking over on the offensive end. And the Jazz call time here. They trail by 16. There's 138 left in the game. There's a minute 34 left in the fourth quarter of this one. Gobert dishes to Exum. Pass to Mitchell. Back to Exum. Fires the three. Bazemore grabs the miss. Bazemore's got four rebounds now tonight. And tonight's battle is going to end with a very clear winner, leaving nothing to chance. Impressive win for the Hawks. And the big difference here was accuracy from three-point range. And once they started sinking shots, 
Yeah, he really stretched out the D and created other opportunities. And anytime they got space, they seemed to just knock down another triple. And this will now push it to a total of 44 games in the win column on the season. And so they'll take the first game of the season series, a team they'll only see twice. They're certainly happy to start it off with a win. And what a tremendous standout performance it was for Vucevic. This guy has been shot making all night long. He commands the rock and takes over. Now here's Vucevic following the miss by Donovan Mitchell. Young, great pass to set up the lay-in. And the Hawks lead by 20. Saw the opportunity to put this away and did not turn it down. Yeah, playing with great energy and great effort. And as a coach, you'd love to see this from your team every single night. Now, here's Mitchell. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Well, put all that size to good use. Rip it off the backboard. And here's Vucevic. And so Atlanta takes this one by a big margin. This one was over well before the final buzzer. The fans were waiting for something to get excited about, Greg, but they never got it. Mm, they sure didn't. I mean, they just rolled to this win. They made it look really easy. What an efficient performance at both ends. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks, Kevin. Elfred, first off, congrats on the win. What was the key to getting this one? Oh, man. We made shots. Uh, we did a good job of, you know, just getting to the rim. Big effort tonight, Alfred. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge, and the rest of our terrific crew, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long.